Hola, hola guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Roxanne, if it's your first time here, then welcome. Uh, I haven't done a wrap up in a really long time. It's been, August would be going on the third month that I haven't done a wrap up, so I wanted to talk a little bit about the books that I have been reading this summer. I'll probably do it in two parts. I'll probably do June, July in one, um, do like summer part one, and then I'll probably do August on its own because I'm trying to get back into the groove of filming, so I will probably just do August on its own. I didn't get a lot of reading done in June and July. Um, if you guys have been seeing some of my previous videos, then you probably know why. It was just um, a lot of stuff was going on. So I'm, I'm also getting back into the groove of not only filming, but, but reading. And so, yeah, uh, that's why I'm not going to have too many books to show you guys for the two books, for the two months. But uh, yeah, I mean, reading is reading whether you do one book or 20. So first book that I finished in June 5th was Jane Eyre, um, Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte and I, I loved it. I, I enjoyed it very, very much. Um, I loved how atmospheric it was. I loved how gripping it was. I loved just the, the tone of it and, and how just it really I, I was just completely sucked in and I was both I was physically reading it and also listening to it on the audiobook and it was just a really great escape when um, a lot of shitty things were happening and so I really really enjoyed it the trouble that I had with it was and it, and it's not the book itself it's it's me as a, as from from a reader's perspective I had difficulty not difficulty, I just kept having to remind myself to take it in its time. So a lot of people talk to me about Jane Eyre like, you know, as this wonderful sort of feminist book. And so I had to remember to take it in the context in which it was written in the time. I, I kept I kept almost trying to view it from from a modern feminist perspective and um you know, I, I couldn't because for its time, she was doing a lot of things. Jane, as, as a character, was doing a lot of things that weren't expected and weren't the norm for her gender. And so it was it was very like awesome in that in that in that sense. But again, I just had to remind myself to take a step back and take it in the time in which it was written. And I, and I really did enjoy it. I don't didn't like either male character like the to both male characters were horrible to me I, I I don't know if you guys like them or not but I don't know let's see what I wrote but I, I um they were just so annoying both were so manipulative and what is the second guy so I thought both Mr. Rochester and St. John were incredibly incredibly manipulative um Rochester is jealous and he like lies and puts on fucking like he acts in certain ways and does certain things to make her act or think certain things and that just really didn't sit well with me and um saint john saint john was just like a religious zealot that i didn't i i hate it obviously so i didn't like the male characters but overall as a story and jane as a character i grew very attached to and so i gave it like a 4.5 out of 5 stars then I was listening on audiobook. I listened to a bunch. So I guess I'll just get all the audiobooks out of the way, even though I didn't read them in succession. Uh, the, but the first one that I read, I don't know if you can see that, but, whoop, but it was, I was told, oh no. I was told there'd be cake by Sloane Crosley or Crosley. I know nothing about her. I knew nothing about her going in. It was just available on overdrive and it sounded interesting and it was it was a little interesting and sometimes it was a little bit funny but it really wasn't anything spectacular. It was just her talking about some shit that's going on in her life. I don't know if if they're true. I think they're true. She obviously just gave it like a little bit of a comical spin but it was nothing out of this world or anything it was just something to listen to while i was in the car um and i gave it like a th three out of five stars i read stiff the curious lives of human cadavers by mary roach which you might have seen around and i loved this book um i thought i think she's a great like science writer she makes it very accessible she makes it funny she um was just really really great and you, you 
realize like how well researched she it, it was and and i just really really enjoyed it this is one this is a book that i um i listened to on overdrive but it's but i definitely want to get a physical copy of it and add it to my nonfiction collection because i really enjoyed it i thought it was i thought the topic matter was very interesting i thought the way she approached it was very interesting all the research that she did all of the different examples that she talked about i, th I thought it was great it had me um just coming back to learn more and more the more i read it or listened to it so i thought it was great another one that i read by her but so i gave that one a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I think actually if I would have read it, I might have enjoyed it even more and gave it like a full 5 stars. Um, but yes, I definitely want to add this to my collection. Another one that I read by Mary Roach is Gulp. This one was also available on Overdrive and I didn't enjoy this one as much. It was still um, very well researched and still very accessible and still funny at times. I just didn't find the subject matter to be as interesting to me as uh, Stiff. So that was that was just kind of my bad, I think, probably. Because if you're really interest interested in the way we eat and the things we eat and the mouth and saliva and the eating in general and all of those things then you might find that very very interesting and more interesting than stiff but i enjoy one subject matter more than the other even if that makes me a little creepy and macabre that was it those the those were the three books that i listened to an audiobook but another book that i have to show you on my ipad because i don't physically have it because i got rid of it was the graphic novel love is love and i believe this was um a special project that was put together by dc comics if i'm not mistaken and it was after Pulse in Orlando, a bunch of artists decided that they wanted to get together and do something for the LGBTQIA community, plus community. And so there are different stories. Every, um, I think every like page or every two pages was a different piece and a different or a different story, things like that. And I expected to absolutely love it like love it love it beyond a shadow of a doubt and i didn't and it was such a sad feeling when i didn't and so some of them some of the stories some of the spreads the artwork was amazing and it just it blew me away and it was it was just fantastic if i keep looking past the camera it's because i um i have my goodreads over here it's just because i'm trying to refresh my memory it's been so long some of them i loved and so i and i felt like they just got it and then others i thought were so unnecessary or just shouldn't have been included in, in the collection at all so i gave it like a 2.5 maybe 3 out of 5 stars and so i felt that it had all the potential in the world like you literally could have done the greatest thing ever but there were there were a lot of things that i that i didn't like i thought way too much focus was on romantic love um which is not the only type of affection and and caring that exists in the lgbtqia plus community obviously there is one particular spread that really just had me really upset and it was this this guy who set who states in the in his like it's like i think if i'm not mistaken it was the images were of like him in front of a computer or him writing something out or just like this white guy writing something out and it was him talking about how he didn't know what to say or what to do because he wasn't part of the community and he wasn't affected but he wanted to do something and it's like i understand the desire to do something but that is not the like the time or the place you were you are taking both like physically and otherwise space away from someone of the community who could have had an amazingly impactful story to tell in that one to two page spread like it literally to it told me nothing i had to, i sat there and i read it and i looked at these and and i took nothing away from that because you were not part of this community and you are taking the mic away from someone who who is and could have said something more and so that was really annoying i just like i understand you wanted to do something nice but like if this is supposed to be like by and for people of the community you're not part of that so we have to learn to sort of step back from situations that don't directly affect us and cede the mic to those that it does affect
and I think that was an opportunity that was missed, at least in that particular spread. Oh, I'll also, <clears throat> it gets really graphic in some of the spreads. Like, almost, I would definitely say, if you, like, trigger warning for just very graphic, violent images of the victims. And I, I was blown away. I was looking at the fucking image. Like, are you seriously telling me that you decided to create a graphic book a graphic novel or like a like one of these one of these things f to for people as specifically affected by the by what happened in pulse and you're going to put in it like depictions of what the victims looked like like the victims are you kidding me i like I was just, I, I thought that was completely, I thought that was completely unnecessary. I think that's incredibly triggering. So, I mean, if you, if you know of anybody who was, who was there or if things like that just really affect you, then I would recommend not, not picking this book up because I, I, it really took me by surprise and I had never been to Pulse. I knew, I knew friends who went all the time and, um, obviously I consider myself to be part of the community for reasons I don't really talk about that much but and I and I thought that was incredibly just it was unnecessary and a bit inappropriate if I'm being honest with you guys so yeah I just I didn't like it like 2.5 out of 5 stars another I read that in June because it was LGBTQA pride it was pride month and that kind of let me down. But then I read Blue's the Warmest Color and absolutely loved it. I, I think I gave this like a 5 out of 5 stars it is so beautiful, so heart, so heartbreaking. It it is it is emotional and it is gripping and it just I'm pretty sure I cried. It's everything. I loved this so much. Please, please pick it up if you haven't. The artwork is amazing. There are adult images here, so you know for younger audiences maybe wait a little bit if you don't think you are ready for that but it is so good so good so like inspiring and sad and happy and so many things all at once and it was able to convey so much in like such a short amount of time i just this was great oh i read harry potter and the chamber of secrets which is right mother Nothing really more needs to be said about it. I don't think it was amazing. I loved it. It was great. I read Longborn by Joe Baker. Um, uh, Olive from a book Olive talked about this in her channel and she loved it. And I read it because it is like a retelling of Pride and Prejudice from the perspective of the servants. And it was amazing. It gave me... It gave me very similar Pride and Prejudice feels when I was reading it. Um, it immediately wanted, like made me want to read Pride and Prejudice again. And... and um sort of try and see it other also from the perspective that from the perspectives and the things that happened in this book i think the, the, i think she understood the characters so well like the ones that we know from pride and prejudice she was able to, the writing is beautiful and it was just you felt like you were back in longbourn it was it was amazing i loved it and yeah totally recommend it longbourn by joe baker then the last book that I read in the month of July was, in the month of July was Red Seas Under Red Skies by Scott Lynch. This is the second book in the Gentleman Bastards series. This one has pirates, it has cats, it has more women characters. If I'm not mistaken, if thinking about the description of the women, some of them might be of color as well. It was amazing. It was great. It was just as funny and sarcastic as the first one. And it has pirates and cats and more women in it. So... I mean, what are you guys waiting to pick this up? It was great. I love, you know, the th the theft and the heist and the lying. <laughs> Things that you probably shouldn't love, but I love in this book and I love in books in general. So yeah, um, I love the characters even more than I did before. They're more flawed in this than they were in the first. They're, um, so you, you, you really get to, to know about them and connect to them in more ways than you were able to in the first book and i just really enjoyed it i can't wait to continue on with the series i gave this like a four out of five four point five 
out of five. I would say that overall my summer reading was was good. I think it was like an average of like four stars, I think. I think the lowest I gave was like a 2.5, but I gave a lot of um, four and 4.5 out so yeah i mean the the books were able to to help get me through some stuff that was going on and that is that some stuff that goes on in life so yeah i recommend most of them yeah as always thank you so much for watching and for listening i love and appreciate you guys let me know what you read this past summer and let me know if you've read any of the books that I mentioned, if you want to read any of the books that I mentioned, just talk to me. Um, also, I will link all my social media down below if you'd love, if you'd love, <laughs> if you'd like to go follow or friend me on those as well. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. I love you guys.